Nuclear weapons demonstrated their immense destructive power towards the end of World War II. The Soviet Union officially possessed atomic bombs in 1949. At that time, another issue facing the Soviet Union was how to deliver nuclear weapons in future wars. The Soviet Union did not have suitable intercontinental bombers at the time, and it was proven that relying solely on bombers to drop free-falling nuclear bombs had a low success rate. In the 1950s, missile and rocket technology made significant advancements. Cruise missiles were considered another promising means of delivering nuclear weapons, in addition to supersonic bombers. Thus, the LA-350 Storm Rain Intercontinental Cruise Missile was developed. Developing intercontinental cruise missiles at that time was extremely challenging. Although high-speed missiles theoretically had stronger breakthrough capabilities, satellite navigation and other technologies did not exist at that time. The first problem intercontinental missiles had to solve was control and navigation technology. Fortunately, the Soviet Union completed technologies such as celestial navigation in 1953, laying the necessary technical foundation for the development of intercontinental cruise missiles. In 1954, the Soviet Union initiated the development of intercontinental cruise missiles. The overall structure of the missile was roughly determined. The missile was somewhat similar to future spacecraft, divided into two basic parts, the carrier rocket and the missile body. The initial design was submitted in August of that year after only a few months. The relevant departments requested modifications to some details of the missile, such as increasing the warhead weight to 2.35 tons, which was directly related to the size of Soviet nuclear weapons at the time. The carrier rocket of the missile had two large boosters, each capable of carrying 6,300 kilograms of fuel and 20,840 kilograms of oxidizer. At the end, there was a S2.0-1100 engine with four chambers, later replaced by the S2.1150 rocket engine. The boosters were 18.9 meters high, 1.45 meters in diameter, and could generate 68.61 tons of thrust. The engine had control fins that could adjust the flight attitude during flight. The missile body with wings was attached to the boosters. The missile itself was powered by an RD-012U ramjet engine. Jet. This type of engine could not be started when stationary or at low speeds. It ignited after the booster rocket carried the missile to a height of about 17,500 meters. The engine's air intake was located at the front of the missile. Between the missile's outer shell and the inner wall of the air intake duct was the fuel tank. The back of the missile had a structure that looked like a cockpit, but it actually housed the navigation and cooling equipment. The missile's shape followed the aerodynamic requirements for cruising altitude with a long triangular wing and a 70 dedigus swept back leading edge. The tail had X-shaped rudders. To launch the Storm Rain, a special launch platform needed to be built. Similar to the conventional space rocket launch mode, the missile had to be turned to a vertical position and then the launch frame rotated in the correct direction. The Storm Rain Intercontinental Cruise Missile had a large and bulky overall structure, with a launch weight of 96,000 kilograms, a total length of 19.9 meters, a flight range between 18 to 25.5 kilometers, a cruising speed of 3.1 to 3.3 Mach, with a maximum speed of 3.5 Mach, an operational range of 8,000 to 8,500 kilometers, and carried a 2,090 kilogram nuclear warhead. The missile had an error range of within 9 kilometers. Although accidents occurred during missile testing, overall, it became more mature. Tests in 1960 showed that the missile's reliability had greatly improved, and new navigation technology was used. However, intercontinental ballistic missile technology also matured in the late 1950s, making ballistic missiles more feasible in comparison. Therefore, the Soviet Union decided to terminate the development of Storm Rain in February 1960. Although the Storm Rain did not officially enter service, the Soviet Union benefited greatly from this project. 
They developed navigation equipment and numerous electronic devices, mastered the processing and manufacturing technology of titanium metal components, as well as knowledge in aerodynamics. These related technologies are still in use today. With the development of current satellite guidance technology and missile technology, cruise missiles can benefit from new technologies. High-speed intercontinental cruise missiles with structures like the Storm Rain seem to have a turning point, and it is unknown if they will be reborn someday in the future.